iPhones come with amazing cameras for both photography and videography. Whereas many Android phones support manual control right out of the box, iPhones don't. So therefore, if you want to control ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and all that kind of stuff, then you're going to have to download an app. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the best apps to shoot video with an iPhone, but I'll be going in order of affordability. Cheapest first, most expensive last. Just bear in mind that the price for apps can change depending on the region that you're in. Also over time, so next week they might be a different price. And also there's hidden extras like in-app purchases. One thing you do need to know that if you have an iPhone from about iPhone 7 onwards, you're never gonna get complete manual control over your exposure. And this is down to computational features which give your iPhone Phone camera more dynamic range. A thing called dynamic tone mapping overrides your camera's ISO as it tries to boost details in the shadows. Starcam is an app created by Duin to be used with some of their gimbals. For example, the Smooth 5. However, you can actually use it without connecting to a gimbal. If you just want basic control of shutter, ISO, white balance and focus, you can do that within this app. You're going to see this flashing Bluetooth icon, but you can just ignore that. And there's some LUTs here that you can add as well, including log profiles. There's also a variety of other features, some of which you do need to pay a subscription for. In fact, most of these LUTs are free, including all the log profiles. Like I say, if you just want basic controls for free, this app can do a job. It's nice and easy to access exposure and focus controls. In the bottom left, we have the settings. So tap one of them and then switch from auto to manual, and then just use the slider to adjust the setting and you have these yellow exposure and focus reticles. So just tap and drag to separate them out, and now you can set and look exposure and focus using these reticles. So just place the reticle in the frame at the place where you want to set focus or exposure, and then tap to lock or unlock it. If you go into settings, go into filming, you will find a few other settings here. In Starcam, you can also set bitrate and codec, but other than that, it's pretty much very basic. But anyway, it is free. Beastcam is an app created by makers of iPhone filmmaking accessories, Beastgrip. When it was launched a couple of years ago, Beastcam cost about $15. And that's currently going for $2. According to the App Sliced website, the app was briefly $1 about a month ago. Anyway, $2 is obviously a steal for what this app can do. Visually, it is pretty busy, but once you spend a bit of time getting familiar with the layout, it soon becomes pretty intuitive. Now, whereas some camera apps only allow you to shoot either photos or video, Beastcam allows both, and you can switch between photo and video mode easily. You can manually control all the main settings, shutter, ISO, white balance, and focus. Just tap the relevant button at the bottom to bring up a slider. Tap focus and use the slider. Now, I really do like the automation of focus pulls in this app, and I'd say it's easier to use than Filmic Pros. Move focus to the first point, then tap one of the buttons number one to three, and it turns blue. Move to the second point, and tap another of the numbered buttons, which also turns blue. And at the top, you got this button here, which allows you to precisely set the focus pull speed. To move between each point, just tap one of the blue buttons. You can also automate zooms in exactly the same way. The square and the circle are what's known as reticles, which allow you to set and lock exposure and focus. Move the reticle over the area that you want to use to set focus or exposure, and then tap to lock, and they're gonna turn blue. Tap the three dots top left to open up some settings. Digital Slate allows you to customize the naming of your recorded clips. So it's gonna be easier to find what you need later. There are hardware settings, and these are mainly aimed at Bscript's conversion lenses for iPhone. So we have DOF, which stands for Depth of Field Adapter, and the 1.33 times and 1.55 times anamorphic D-squeeze settings. There's three stabilization settings, off, standard, and cinematic. There's some guides you can switch on, including one which allows you to see how level the camera is, which is pretty cool, I think. And a few of the apps do that. Next button down allows you to switch lenses. Below that we have resolution, frame rate, bit rate, and codec settings. So I don't know what beast level bit rate is. I guess I could look it up, but really they could just write the rate instead, I think. I do like being able to switch through the resolution and quickly see which frame rates are available. 
So you've got 8-bit, 10-bit, 10-bit HDR and ProRes here. There's audio controls and below that another settings button. At the top, we can switch between two exposure modes, manual and smart. A window pops up suggesting you use smart exposure. Presumably that's down to the dynamic tone mapping that I talked about. But if you do choose smart exposure, you can no longer set ISO and shutter speed manually. Here you can select some analytical overlays. And if you choose auto, you will get zebras or focus peaking depending on the control that you're using. Although this interface might look confusing at first glance, I do think this is very well laid out and all the controls are easy to reach. Pro Movie Recorder is only $3, or in the UK it's actually £2.49. You can actually install and use all the features for free, but your videos will contain a watermark unless you pay. If you like your interface with big lettering, you might like Pro Movie. As well, using this button top left, you can cycle through different looking interfaces, including no interface at all. All the main controls are easily accessed by tapping the relevant setting. If you tap the screen, you can set exposure and focus for the area of the image that you tap. So you can tap lock or tap the X to switch back to auto. And you can also separate out the exposure and focus reticles. So there's a nice big button on the left for frame rate and resolution. You can also change aspect ratio and bit rate here. To select the video format, you need to tap the cog, go into settings and then open advanced. And then you can change between H.264 and H.265, but you will find that there is no Dolby Vision or ProRes. So that's a bit of a long route to change codec. And then unfortunately we don't have the full choice of codecs here. By tapping shutter or ISO, you can adjust exposure manually and the settings are marked red as locked. You then get these reticles in the middle of the screen. Tap it to unlock and the app springs back to auto exposure and focus. So you just swipe the slider to change the setting. On my iPhone 14 Pro, this slider is quite short, which means if you want to shoot a deep focus pull, you might actually run out of slider. However, one little feature that's unique to this app is that you can press the buttons at the top and bottom to get the slider to move as well. So you could use that for a focus pull, but you only have one speed available. There's three options for stabilization, off, one or two. I found that whichever I selected, there was actually no difference. To switch cameras, you need to tap the cog, tap camera and then select from a list. Again, it's one or two extra taps and it's to reach something that you're likely to want to use frequently, more often than resolution frame rate, for example. And yet you do get this big button dedicated for those settings. However, it does have a triple lens mode. And in triple lens mode, the app is gonna automatically switch between lenses when zooming, like you can with the native iPhone camera app. So there are limits to when you can use this, like for example, high frame rates are out of bounds. There are some basic audio controls and the audio level meter runs across the top of the app. Overall, it's not a bad app and it is very affordable. The Mavis camera app has been around for a while. Currently, it's only $6 on the App Store. So I actually downloaded it a few years back and then the developer actually stopped updating this app for about a year and that kind of put me off. The app got a lot of praise from smartphone filmmakers when it first came out, but I'm really not sure if they're keeping up with the required bug fixing, which I am sure is a constant job on an app like this. The app does have a nice interface as well as easily accessible analytics. Problem is, on my iPhone 14 Pro, the manual exposure controls don't really work. When you slide ISO or shutter speed, the auto exposure seems to kind of override the setting and it springs back. So that's pretty useless. I was actually made aware of this when a member on Patreon mentioned it in our Discord server. So it's not only me having this problem. And for that reason, it's not currently usable as an app for manually controlling your iPhone camera. So I'm not really gonna review it any further. You're welcome to go and pay six pounds for the app, but whether it works or not at any given time it might really be down to luck. Cinema P3 is free to download, but if you want all the controls, you need to buy the Pro version. At the time when I paid for the Pro version, it cost me £7. And this app has a lot of features. It also allows you to customise the way the interface works, so you can set it up to work the way that you prefer. Now, there's no reticles this time, but the bar at the top displays your most important settings. As well, you can tap these settings to bring up relevant controls. Tap the button bottom left, 
to open up three different modes, photo, video, or creative. Photo and video modes also allow you to choose lenses. Creative mode gives you various LUTs and color profiles, including log settings. Tap the film strip button to bring up a resolution, frame rate, and codec picker. This includes a color setting called P3, which is said to offer up to 25% more color than standard Rec. 709 video. Next button along is the lens picker. Tap the spanner button and you'll bring up some more settings. If you want full manual control, switch exposure to manual here. There's many other settings here as well, just tap the tabs to find more. So you've got two levels of cinematic stabilization. You can toggle between global and local dynamic tone mapping. And I would say use local if you want to reduce the way dynamic tone mapping overrides manual exposure. Like I say, you can't get rid of it, but you can sort of control it a bit more. So now you've got video settings, including different ProRes formats. There's audio controls, including switching on or off an audio level meter. And there's lots of other controls here too. Next along, we have tools, which includes displaying a manual focus loop. What this does is zoom in on a portion of the image so that you can more precisely set your focus. And once it's on, open manual focus and you'll get this zoomed in circle. And you can actually move this around to the point where you want to get your focus correct. Now you can actually customize display settings and that includes locking your screen to 100% brightness. You know, because while having a dimmed screen saves battery, it also misleads you when you're trying to set exposure. You can also switch screen dimming off completely. Personally, I don't find the interface as intuitive as Beastcam. That said, the amount of features, settings and customization options available is pretty much unmatched by any of the other apps I've tried, including Filmic Pro. Only thing missing is gimbal support, which is pretty much true of all apps except Filmic. Another great thing about this app is the tutorials on the official website. I've only really scratched the surface here with what it's possible to do with this app. Like Beast Grip, Moment makes and sells camera accessories, including conversion lenses for smartphones. They also released their own camera app for iPhone. There is an Android version, but they stopped updating it some years ago. So currently, the Moment app is $7. The interface is nice and simple. You can manually set ISO, shutter speed, white balance, and focus by swiping this menu bar and tapping the setting. You can shoot photos and videos. There's also a slow shutter feature for photos and a time-lapse feature which allows you to add motion blur. So that's a great effect for hyperlapse videos. There's a button top right for switching cameras on your phone, but you have to cycle through to get the camera that you want rather than getting a list to choose from. There's grids and guides, a couple of histograms, analytics overlays, and some support for use with Osmo mobile gimbals. Although I haven't actually tested it to see if it works. Naturally, there are settings for use with Moments conversion lenses. Tap the button top left and choose from a list of buttons. There's also three color profiles available, regular, flat, and log. It is really easy to set resolution and frame rate, but if you want to change codec, you need to go into settings and scroll down a list. Surprisingly, there's no Dolby Vision or ProRes available, but you do get the standard H.264 or H.265. And choices for stabilization are just a basic on or off. However, you can set bitrate up to 100 megabits per second. And you can access PAL frame rates as well, should you need those. But of course, those are also available via the iPhone's native app. If you swipe on the audio meter, you get a level control for monitoring. Now, overall, I'd say it's nice and simple, but there are some basic features missing. No Dolby Vision, ProRes, no 10-bit color option. However, it might be worth having the app simply for the slow shutter and hyperlapse with motion blur. ProCam has been around for a while and currently sits at $10. Plus there are some in-app purchases. So I think I bought everything some time ago and I'm not really sure what the in-app purchases are. I haven't really used this app much, but I seem to have all the features available anyway. The interface is a little bit different. So it does take a bit longer to get familiar with all the controls. To get manual control, you have to tap the M button next to the record button, which reveals the shutter, ISO, and white balance settings. Tap the setting you want to adjust and swipe the slider. To return to auto mode, tap the setting until it turns yellow. 
Tap the circle button top right to open camera options. Tap the arrow below the record button to access frame rate and resolution settings. So they're grouped together so you can't just switch frame rate. You have to find the grouping that you want, like 4K and 24 frames per second, for example. And as well, the developer has decided to include grids and guides here. And personally, I would prefer to have resolution and frame rate separate and put the guides somewhere else. You can also swipe up and down to find the different modes. Video, photo, time lapse, burst photos, slow shutter, portrait, and something called 3D photo. No idea what that is, and I haven't had time to work it out either. If you know in the comments, make sure to let us know as well. Tap the set button top left to access extra settings. Here you can choose Dolby Vision and ProRes, so it's good to know that those formats are supported in this app. There's only on or off for stabilization, but it does at least appear to work. To zoom in and out, in video mode, you need to use these plus and minus buttons. So you can set the speed of the zoom, but there is no manual slider option. The developer says that they have updated the app to make use of the iPhone 14 Pro's two times telephoto. So you can make interface choices, such as switching the audio meter on or off. But there's no option to adjust the bitrate, so I guess you get the iPhone's standard bitrate. Overall, it's not a bad app, but I don't like the interface too much personally. That might be because I'm just not used to it. Mainly, I just don't like choosing frame rate and resolution from a list of combinations. Thing is, I pretty much always shoot 4K, but I will change frame rate regularly. So I would say this app is a no for me, but you might find that it suits your way of working. Now we get into the subscription apps. Subscriptions are of course very unpopular, but if you get a good app that's reliable, well designed and well maintained, perhaps it might be worth it. If spending 15 or $20 a year means that you get an app that works when you need it to, rather than breaking down because the developer doesn't have time to fix all the bugs because he's not getting enough income to justify the time that it takes, then maybe it is worth it. I would say that the app is a really good one, in my opinion. The interface is very user-friendly and important settings are very easy to find and change. And there's no hunting through menus within menus within menus. Tap where it says auto to switch between different modes. If you switch to pro, you're gonna need to pay the subscription to record video. There's also dual, which allows you to record with two cameras at the same time. So you can have a picture within a picture. Portrait creates the kind of fake blurry background like cinematic mode, but not as good and without being able to edit the focal length afterwards. So ProTech has control wheels on each side, a bit like the old version of Filmic Pro. To switch between manual and auto, just tap the button to the side of the wheel. And now you can easily switch between shutter and ISO. And you just swipe the focus zoom wheel to switch to manual focus. Swipe the wheel to set focus. And if you tap the B button to set a point, the wheel will return to this point and you can use it for an automated focus pull. And I would say that this is definitely the best and simplest system for automated focus pulls out of all the apps. To return to autofocus, swipe round until you reach the A. Tap the settings at the top to open up a nice big menu at the bottom. When you choose resolution, I like that you get the bitrate beside it, which goes up to 64 megabits per second. And it just makes sense to have resolution and bitrate together. Frame rate goes up to 60 frames per second and includes 25 frames per second. In 1080p, you can go up to 240 frames per second on my iPhone 14 Pro. There's even a slow six frames per second option for that weird dreamy effect, especially if you combine it with a very slow shutter speed. And you can also easily switch to time-lapse here. Tap the lens button to open up a lens picker. And this is actually the only app I've used which gives direct access to the iPhone 14 Pro's second tele lens, which is the two times. So that's really nice to have. Tap the cog to open up more settings. The data tab allows you to switch codec. And we have the full range from H.264 all the way up to ProRes 4444, which is the highest quality. Under record, we have two pages of settings. On the first page, you can see we have 8-bit, 10-bit, as well as Dolby Vision. So that means that all the current iPhone formats are available and more actually. There's also four different levels of stabilization from completely off all the way up to very extreme, which has a very high latency. 
And in the second page, there's actually this setting called High Dynamic Range Imaging. And you can toggle that on or off. And my guess is that this is to do with dynamic tone mapping. If you switch it off, I expect it reduces the effect, a bit like switching on local in Filmic Pro or some of the other apps. You're probably going to get less dynamic range, but more manual control over your exposure. If we tap this Pro Take button at the top, we get a bunch of LUTs. There's Log C, and there's various looks and film look filters. I don't usually like these, but these ones actually look really good. There's a menu for accessories, including doing gimbals. So I did actually try it with my Smooth 5, and while the gimbal did connect, none of the buttons actually did anything, including the record button, so it's pretty useless. You know, it's probably just a part of the app that the developers have abandoned. But there is also a de-squeeze here for anamorphic lenses, but only the 1.33 times. Now you've got analytics overlays as well as five different histograms in the bottom left. Tap the audio levels to bring up audio controls, and you have options for various guides as well. So this app allows you to use a device as a monitor. So you can use exactly the same app on two different devices and one of them can monitor the other. Just tap this connection button to the left of the counter and set one device to camera and the other to monitor. And in the app that's monitoring, you do get some limited controls such as record, focus and zoom. So this is a pretty extensive app. Anything that's really missing is gimbal support. Downside is of course that it's $20 a year, although actually when I stopped my subscription, they did offer me a 40% discount. So this year is actually only gonna cost me $12. Filmic Pro is now owned by a company called Bending Spoons, which means to use the new version of the app, you're gonna need to pay a rather pricey subscription. For new users, it's gonna be $3 a week or $50 a year. And to be honest, if you want to express your anger at anyone, you should really be directing it at Bending Spoons, who now own this app, because they alone are the only people who are setting the price. The advantage of Filmic Pro over ProTake is that the developers will actually respond to questions and any issues that you have. On the other hand, ProTake doesn't even have a website, it doesn't have any kind of social media presence, there's no manual to access, and there's very limited amount of tutorials online as well. So if you do have any issues with the app, then good luck, because um, I don't think you're gonna find anyone to talk to. So I'm not gonna cover Filmic Pro here because I already made a video about it. And so if you are new to Filmic Pro, then go and check out that video to get an overview of the app. If you want to learn more about how to use shutter speed, how to set ISO, how to lock your white balance and why you need to do that, or if you just want to advance your smartphone filmmaking skills, you can join us on Patreon. If you become a member, there's books to download, there's video lessons, there's all the kinds of behind the scenes podcasts, as well as my documentary that I shot using Filmic Pro. And of course, you can chat to me about any little issues that you might have. We can try and fix those for you. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.